as you know, the European Union um, has a, a new strategy which basically says that in two years or three years' time, we should be uh, independent on energy imports from Russia, meaning fossil fuels, mostly oil and gas. Now, if I put it bluntly, uh, it, from the European point of view, it might seem that you look at the world map and you see where is oil and gas, and then you see, okay, Russia is, we don't want to buy there anymore, so we buy from other regions. So I guess Central Asian oil fields are not empty currently and waiting for investments and, and, and people to come there. Maybe you can elaborate a little bit. How does the situation look like uh, in light of the view that, of course, Europe at the moment is looking for other suppliers for Russia? Oh, that's an excellent question. If you are... You know, asking whether Central Asia can become an alternative to Europe, you know, to replace Russian oil and gas, the answer is no, right away. Uh, almost 30% of the European oil come from, comes from Russia. And uh, what is it? 36, less than 40% of the European gas comes from Russia. And these are millions of barrels of oil, billion, like millions of barrels of oil and uh, uh, hundreds of billions of cubic meters of gas. Like, uh, um, I don't remember the exact number, but I think in 2020 it was like almost 180 billion cubic meters of gas just channeled from Russia to the European countries. What can Central Asia offer? There is only one project, if we are talking about gas, and it's called Trans-Caspian Pipeline, right, to link Turkmen natural gas, you know, uh, um, to then Azerbaijan and go through Caucasus to some of the European countries and then it just kind of, you know, being channeled through two different, uh, uh, you know, pipelines. What's the capacity of this pipeline? It's 30 billion cubic meters. Imagine if they build it next year and it starts operating in full, still it's going to be less than one-fifth of what's China, uh, what Russia is exporting to the European Union. So numbers don't add up right in here. And also uh, for Russia, as I said, Central Asia is not the priority. Europe is the priority number one in its foreign policy. And Russia has always been blocking all pipeline projects which uh, uh, were promoted by the Europeans and uh, very well you know, received by the Central Asian countries, but they were by- bypassing Russian territories, so Russia was against it, and Russia sometimes used very hard you know, approach to it, like initiating conflict in the Caucasus so that those pipeline projects would never be realized. Who would invest in the region where the conflict is going? Of course no one. The Europeans said it several times, money is not an issue. And this Trans-Caspian pipeline is just 180 miles. So it is feasible, it can be built in no time, but the political constraint is there, right? And that's uh, that's a really big issue up until recently. Everyone was surprised when the Chinese actually built their natural gas pipeline from Central Asia to China. And if you add all the four networks, now it's the longest in the world, right? Why? Again, because for Russia, Europe as the customer is important. As long as this gas goes somewhere else, but not to Europe, Russia can accept this. But the moment this gas kind of, you know, starts moving towards the European direction, then there would be some reaction. It doesn't mean that we should give it up, right? Yes, it is important for both Europe and Russia. Europe cannot replace Russian gas but with Central Asia. But that's going to be a huge addition, kind of, you know, contribution, especially to the eastern part of the con- uh, of the European Union. Yes, definitely work on this direction, but expect some sort of a reaction from the Russian side, and we all should be willing and prepared to sacrifice something if we want this to get, uh, you know, done. Just to summarize it, it, it paints me a relatively bleak picture. You mentioned that this has been 30 years in the pu- in the building. It's not been made yet, but still the Chinese have managed to do the same thing in Central Asia. In, in a couple of years, not just 30, right? Okay. So in just in a couple of years, they, they first signed an agreement in 2006. They start building the first line of the Central Asia China gas pipeline in 2008. Uh, and it was completed the same year, 2009, the second line, 2015, the third line, and now 55 billion cubic meters of gas you know, capacity, infrastructure-wise, okay. linking Central Asia to China. It was amazing. Now, now, I, now I have to go back to uh, now I have to go back to Alina and ask. Uh, 30 years we have not, not uh, been able to do a, a pipeline. Maybe we will not in this situation build it in the next two years either. Uh, are there any low-hanging fruits in Central Asia where the European Union could? Help also, like Farquhar, uh, I understand, I understand said that there's uh, some leverage what the Central Asians would like to build up against their bigger neighbors. Are there any lo- low-hanging fruits where the European Union should now engage 
in order to gain leverage and, and influence in the region. I, I think, uh, you know, over the years, um, <coughs> you can see how uh, the relationship with Central Asia uh, has uh, developed, uh, expanding uh, different areas of uh, cooperation. Um, Low-hanging fruit? I am not sure there is a such thing, but I think uh, what we have developed with Central Asia is... Um, uh, um, sort of a framework uh, of cooperation from political cooperation uh, from to trade uh, to um, programmatic uh, work and um, I think what we need, we need to sort of look for uh, where we can make uh, the most um, impact and I think where we can um, help uh, most um, the Central Asian uh, populations, and I think and, uh, we work quite a lot on environmental issues, uh, you know, saving the RLC, which is, mm -hmm. is this the probably the world's worst environmental disaster? Right. I don't, yeah, probably, yeah. or at least, yeah. at yeah. least yeah. they are very pretty much uh, at the top. We're trying to work on uh, water management uh, issues, which I would like to see gain more importance in uh, you know, on the agenda of Central Asian um, leaders. I mean, while I think at least what we hear that there is enough water in the region, however, it needs to be managed much better. Um, <coughs> education, definitely health care. I think there are many trade, uh, promoting inter-regional trade. I think there are um, a lot of uh, issues we can work on. 